In this video, we will determine both direct labor and manufacturing overhead variances. Before we take a look at these variances, I just want to remind you that if actual costs are less than our standard cost, this will result in a favorable variance. If, however, our actual costs exceed the standard cost, this will result in an unfavorable variance. The process of determining the direct labor variance is the same as for determining the direct materials variance. The total labor variance is calculated as the difference between the amount actually paid for labor, not materials, and the amount that should have been paid based on standards. In completing the order, the company incurred 2,100 direct labor hours at an average hourly rate of $14.08. The standard hours allowed for the units produced were 2,000 hours, 1,000 gallons times two hours. The standard labor rate was $15 per hour. The total labor variance is calculated as the difference between the amount actually paid for labor, so our actual hours, which were 2100, times the actual rate of $14.80. The amount that should have been paid is $30,000, which is the standard hours of 2000 Again, if each unit requires two direct labor hours and we produce 1,000 gallons, that means we should have used 2,000 hours, and we multiply that by the standard rate, which is $15. The total labor variance is $1,080, and it is unfavorable because the actual labor costs exceed our standard cost. This variance is caused by differences in the labor rate, or differences between the actual number of labor hours and the number of labor hours that should have been worked for the quantity produced. We need to calculate both a labor price variance as well as a labor quantity variance. The labor price variance results from the difference between the rate paid to workers versus the rate that was supposed to be paid. The labor price variance is calculated as the difference between the actual amount paid, in this example it's $31,080, and the amount that should have been paid for the number of hours worked. We use actual hours, which is $2,100, and we multiply that by $15, which is the standard rate for labor. The labor price variance is $420. And this is favorable because the actual rate is less than the standard rate. The labor price variance can also be calculated by multiplying the actual hours worked by the difference between the actual pay rate and the standard pay rate. In this example, we would take 2100 and we would multiply that by the difference between the actual and the standard pay rate. In this case, it would be 20 cents, and we would arrive at a favorable variance of $420. Again, we know it's favorable because the actual pay rate of $14.80 is less than the standard pay rate, which is $15. My preference is to use the alternative formula. The other component of the total labor variance is the labor quantity variance. The labor quantity variance results from the difference between the actual number of labor hours and the number of labor hours that should have been worked for the quantity produced. The labor quantity variance is calculated as the difference between the amount that should have been paid for the hours worked. If actual hours are 2100, we simply multiply that by the standard rate of $15, which equals $31,500. And the amount that should have been paid for the amount of hours that should have been worked, aka standard costs. So we simply multiply the standard hours by the standard rate for labor, which equals $30,000. The labor quantity variance is $1,500. And this variance is unfavorable because they use 2,100 hours to produce 1,000 units. The standard called for two hours for each unit, or 2,000 hours. 
The same result can be obtained by multiplying the standard rate by the difference between the actual hours worked and the standard hours allowed. We simply multiply the standard rate, which is $15, by the difference between the actual and standard hours, or in this instance, 100, to arrive at a variance of 1,500. We know this variance is unfavorable because the actual hours worked exceeds the standard. As you know, I prefer the alternative formula. The total direct labor variance of $1,080 consists of both a price and quantity variance. These variances help managers to determine if they have met both the price and quantity objectives regarding labor. The same result can also be obtained from using this matrix. Labor price variances usually result from two factors paying workers different wages than expected, or misallocation of our workers. The responsibility for the labor price variance rests with the manager who authorized the wage change. The production department generally is responsible for this variance if it results from misallocation of the workforce. Labor quantity variances relate to the efficiency of workers. The cause of a quantity variance generally can be traced to the production department. The cause of an unfavorable variance may be poor training, worker fatigue, faulty machinery, or carelessness. These causes are the responsibility of the production department. If, however, the excess time is due to inferior materials, the responsibility falls outside of the production department. For this exercise, you will be calculating a total labor variance as well as the price and quantity variances. The solution will be provided in the next video. The total overhead variance is the difference between the actual overhead cost and the overhead cost applied based on standard hours allowed for the amount of goods produced. This company incurred overhead cost of 10,900 to produce 1,000 gallons in the month of June. In Learning Objective 1, we calculated the predetermined overhead rate to be $5. To find the total overhead variance in a standard costing system, we determine the overhead cost applied based on standard hours allowed. Standard hours allowed are the hours that should have been worked for the units produced. Overhead costs are applied based on direct labor hours. Because it takes two hours of direct labor to produce one gallon, the standard hours allowed are 2,000 hours, 1,000 gallons times two hours. We then apply the predetermined overhead rate of $5 to the 2,000 standard hours allowed. The total overhead variance is $900 unfavorable. This variance helps managers determine if they have met their objectives regarding manufacturing overhead. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video. The overhead variance is generally analyzed through a price and quantity variance. The name usually given to the price variance is the overhead controllable variance. The quantity variance is referred to as the overhead volume variance. These computations are discussed in more detail in advanced courses, as well as in the appendix. Generally, the responsibility for the manufacturing overhead variances rests with the production department. I selected this exercise because you'll be calculating both the materials and the labor variances. The solutions to this exercise will be provided in the next video.